Hello, and welcome to this short guide on how to survive in Thrive as a plant build. Plant builds rely on proteins and organelles which convert sunlight into glucose. The thylakoid is the protein that does this, and at 100% sunlight, it converts that into 0.015 glucose per second, and like all the other proteins and cytoplasm, it will produce its own energy and consume 0.006 glucose to create 2 ATP per second. The chloroplast is the organelle that does this, and at 100% sunlight, it will produce 0.08 glucose per second. Now, the thylakoid only takes up one hex, and the chloroplast takes up three. But the chloroplast is much more efficient, because if you were to have the same number of thylakoids that it would take to fill up the same amount of space as a single chloroplast, it would be producing 0.045 glucose per second. However, a chloroplast is producing 0.08 glucose per second, almost double the amount for the same amount of space. Now, one of the most important things about a plant's build is that sunlight only exists in a few different patches, six to be exact. In these four, there is 100% sunlight. This is where plants are most efficient. This is where you want to be as a plant. Over here, you have 1% sunlight, which is practically zero, like all of these layers down here. And in all honesty, there is no point in doing anything as a plant in this patch. Now up here, in the ice shelf, you have 50% sunlight, which is enough to survive on, however, it's not the best place for a plant. It can be good supplemented by other food sources, such as iron, which is very rich in this region, but if you're going for a purely plant build, you are much better off being in one of these environments. Now you might be wondering, well, how do I get up here whenever I start the game down here where there is no sunlight? The answer to this is that you cannot be a plant until you reach this layer or any of the others attached to it. So, starting here, you'll want to feast on the glucose available in the environment, which does go down by 80% every single generation. So the best strategy for a plant build is to quickly, with each subsequent generation, move patches until you make it here, where you can fully utilize a plant build. So what will your cell look like during that time? Well, a strategy I have found useful is to rely on metabolisomes early on. Now these convert glucose into ATP, and a very simple build that you can get in two generations is this. Very fast, very efficient, and it is very good at surviving. And in fact, within two generations, you can get a chemoreceptor on this, which you can modify to search for glucose in the environment, which will be your main food source. And you usually want to have it have settings like this, search radius maximum so you can find glucose far away, and detect minimum amount where it's about this, so that you're not looking for the tiniest bit of glucose that's not going to help you at all, but still allowing it to detect somewhat small amounts that will be useful. Now, once you make it to a patch with sunlight, you might be tempted to go straight into thylakoids in order to harvest the sunlight. However, thylakoids are very expensive. 50 mutation points. You get 100 mutation points every generation, so you can only get two of these in a single generation. And they don't do that much. They are very, very inefficient. So what you'll want to have is chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are how you make it as a plant. They're the organelle that defines this build. So to get them, you'll need a nucleus, which means you will need enough energy in order to support said nucleus. Now, a cell design like this, with six metabolisomes, can easily support a nucleus, which you probably wouldn't want to place it there. What you'd want to do is move these off to the side, 
move this up, put a nucleus down, they can support itself, and you can survive off of glucose in your environment for one more generation. Here we find the most crucial part of the plant build, which is the chloroplast. So you put this down, and you'll notice that it is now producing glucose. Well, it is still the negative, but you put two of these down, they cost 50. Same as the much more inefficient thylakoids. And now, you are actually producing glucose. Which is... Amazing. Like, your cell will survive just by sitting around, soaking up the sun. You don't have to hunt for food, you don't have to hunt for compounds, you can survive merely by just existing. It is a very safe, very stable build to have. Now don't be freaked out by the red ATP production low little warning here. Uh, whenever you're moving, you're not producing enough ATP. But, that means that you can still survive without moving. If you move in short bursts, it is still good. However, that is not ideal, so what you'll want to do is evolve your cell to have mitochondria. So mitochondria will convert glucose into energy much more efficiently than metabolosomes. So over some generations, get that, and eventually you'll be in the green again. Two chloroplasts can support four mitochondria, which can then go on to support other organelles such as a second flagellum, or more chemoreceptors, because at this point you won't want to be searching for glucose anymore. You've got all the glucose you need. What you will need are compounds you need to reproduce, like ammonia, compounds like phosphate. Now with a cell like this, very good is a very good place to survive. You can do stuff like add nitrogen-fixing plastids in order to produce a little bit of your own ammonia. And this build right here can support it. You can also add on a toxin vacuole if you want to spit out poison. You can be a very effective ambush predator, lying in wait, perfectly fine because you are producing glucose on your own and will not starve to death and shooting at any unsuspecting cell that gets close to you, and taking any compounds that they have. One very useful addition you can add is a spike. Now you can put the spike on the front, want to stab some stuff with it, or you can put it all around your sides to basically just protect you from other cells. At this point, the only threat you have is other cells. Other cells that can hurt you through poison, possibly even ones that can absorb you, you want to protect yourself against them. Starvation is not an issue for a plant cell. Something else to consider if you are doing a plant build is the membrane that you're choosing. A cellulose membrane can go a very far away, decreases your mobility, and it does decrease your resource absorption speed. It has the huge drawback of not allowing you to engulf other cells, effectively ending any strategy that involves predation, but it gives you minus 20% osmoregulation cost, plus 50 health, which is immense, and plus 40% physical resistance. And it can be very useful for making your cell into just a tank. And you can use any of these other membranes here. I just like cellulose because it just feels right when you're doing a plant cell because, well, it's basically how real plant cells are. So with all this in mind, how does the cell build actually play? Well, as you can see, glucose is just constantly going up merely by existing, and your main goal is really just to find ammonia and phosphate. Now one huge downside to the plant build is that Chloroplasts take up three hexes. They are the largest organelle that is not a nucleus. And you'll need multiple of them to support your cell. And that will increase the size of your cell significantly. Which will therefore decrease your speed significantly. Not that you'll need speed that much in order to hunt and survive, but it just becomes very inconvenient for you as a player. And on that note, I'll be leaving the video here. 
So, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.